Hey, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to join me again for this final episode of the Rebel Snowspeeder. So last time I had gone around, uh, done the painting of like the stripes and all, I started doing weathering using some AK pencils, using some pastels and such, and did the entire body and ended up at the point that we're at right here. So if you take a look here, you can see this battle damage on the ship there's chunks taken out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a Dremel tool and I've already done the blast marks as far as using the paints but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna chip away at the plastic and ding it up and make it look like it's been hit like the uh, island miniature was I'm gonna do that on both sides here just go around and ding it up with my Dremel tool and now that I've got it dinged up I'm going to touch it up a little bit again with my AK weather pencil. I'm also going to ding up this section back here that was beat up on the island miniature. And I also did these areas as well. Now I'm going to move on to painting some more interior. These petals here with some sky gray. Then I'm going to do a little bit of a German gray wash to pick up those little holes. Then I'm also going to paint some neutral gray around the outside of the petals. You won't see this, but at least I know they're painted. And then it's time to start putting the interior back in. I got these sides that I need to put in here. So they go in carefully on the sides. If you remember, um, I cut out some section here so that it doesn't pinch my fiber optics. I'm going to go ahead and place both of these sides in and get those in position. And those are now in place and a quick lighting test and no fibers seem to be pinched. They all light up just fine. So I have the fibers run around, taped down. They're running into this little three millimeter LED here. Um, these fibers also run around and loop and run into this LED here. And I put shrink tube on it last episode and then I've hot glued this into place on the kit. And at this point, I now have the rear gunner panel here. I have this with some fiber optic and wires, and I just need to carefully gather all these up and run them in through the hole that I had drilled out in the previous episode. I've got the wires through there. I'm gonna run the fiber and then just put this into position. And here I've got it in position. Everything's in there and here's the fibers coming through i bundled those together and i have my hot and ground wires for the led that lights up the uh, monitor and another quick lighting test and everything seems to be working fine nothing pinched and then lastly we have the front console here uh, this just had three pairs of wires for the three leds that are behind there to light up the uh, screens and I've got those in place. I also put the decals over the photo etch to give it more detail. I cut out the center so that the uh, lights would come through and just gives it a lot more detail and makes it look a lot more realistic. So I've got all this done. I have my wires here for the back LED. I have my three pairs of wires for the three monitors for the front console LEDs. So what I've done is I've taken all of my hots and I've attached them to some 390 ohm resistors. Those are all hot glued together and they go to one main hot wire here. These are sealed up with liquid electrical tape. So I've taken the hots that light these and the LED back there. Those are all taped up bound up here with the resistors that runs through out to the back. Then I also have my grounds from the front LEDs along with this rear one. Those are all bundled up here attached to the three millimeter LED and they run out the bottom here as well. And this hot is also attached running out separately from the other SMD LEDs. Which means we can move on to the bottom here. So I've just done a quick paint of dark gray here. You can't really see it. It's just in case any light shines through. 
But the first thing we do is we go ahead and we attach the seats to the uh, bottom portion here. And I've taken the wires from the top, run them through this hole, which is supposed to be for the support. Run those through the hole, and I'm going to put the bottom portion together with the top portion. And I've got those pushed together now, and all three of my wires are perfectly running out that hole on the bottom. And here's one last quick test. All lighting, all fiber optics are working, everything's great. So now it's time to move on to the pilots. I've painted them with Tamiya Fine Gray Primer. Um, as far as the color, I'm mixing my own with some Tamiya Flat Red and Yellow. I started with the base yellow, added just a few drops of red till I get to the color orange I'm looking for. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to airbrush both the pilots with my orange color. So there we've got a pilot painted. Then I'm going to do the helmets with flat white. I'm just going to hand brush that. And both pilots have their helmets painted white. Then I went on and painted their gloves with the flat white, as well as their boots flat white. Then I went and did German gray for the handles they're holding, and I used pale flesh for their faces. Then I proceeded with some neutral gray and did their chest panels and belts and hoses with various shades of gray. And then I did a clear coat over the entire body so that I could then go and do a wash, which I did with German gray. And here's how we have the pilots looking so far with their paint jobs. Still glossy, I have to give them a flat coat to flatten them back down. And then we have the decals. We got one different color for each pilot here. So I'll start with this first pilot. We have this little stripe that goes down the top center of the helmet. Then we have the little rebel symbol for the side of the helmet. And I've done that on both the pilots now and I've given both of them a coat of flat to seal the uh, decals on and just tone them down. And here you can see how they look. Then we place the pilots into their seats. So the photo wedge I got from Green Strawberry also includes some seat belts. Um, they're to be used without the pilots, but I'm going to modify it and use it with the pilots. And I'm going to have this strap coming over the pilot. So you can see I've got this one seat belt cut out here, the photo etch. Um, and I have the rest of all these seat belts. There's the ones that go across the lap, the ones that come over the shoulders and all that. So I'm going to cut the rest of these out. And I've got them all cut out here. I don't even know if I'm going to use all of it, but I'm going to go ahead and use the shoulder straps for sure and probably these over the lap. We'll see how it works out. So I've got them all stuck to some tape here. I've sprayed them all with a Tamiya Fine Gray Primer, a light coat of some sky gray in areas, and then a wash of German gray inside to pick up the details. I've gone and I've glued the shoulder straps onto the pilot. I also put the little pieces on the lap, across the lap here. And then I have the pieces that come out the bottom on the sides that would be attaching to the seat, you know, which would be the, the lap straps essentially attaching to the seat. And I've got this pilot put in place and then I have the shoulder strap glued to the seat itself in the back. Uh, you can see down in the bottom there kind of where that strap comes down and attaches to the seat. And then I also have my front pilot here. The other one was the back pilot, but here's the front pilot with the same configuration of seat belts. And then I've also got him in place and I have it glued to the seat as well. And you can sort of see the lap straps down there in the bottom. And here's just another shot showing the straps, the seat straps. I also took some photo etch and I glued them into the hand, some like little joystick controllers. You can see those there. And then there's that little knob shifter that I put in the first episode. You'll also notice there's some hoses 
in the gunner portion back here in the back of the cockpit. So I have some guitar string. So I'm going to go ahead and use this guitar string to make hoses. So I've cut them down to the length I want, shaped them a little bit. Then I've gone and I've sprayed them with Tamiya Fine Gray Primer and then done a wash of German Gray over them to pick up the corrugation. And then I went ahead and I glued those into position in the back of the cockpit here. Then we have the canopy to move on to uh, that I need to paint and weather. And you'll also notice on the underside there's some detailing here. Well I also have some photo etch. Uh, these are some pistons and latches and stuff for opening and closing it. So I've got all these cut out um, for the canopy. These are some accessories to just go for detailing on the bottom. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to try to cut this canopy right here. Um, that's actually where it would lift. Um, there would be a space right there. So I'm going to see if I can cut that out um, so that I can remove this. So I'm going to go ahead with my blade here and just very carefully go down this little seam here and try to cut this canopy. So I've gone around the whole thing and I have cut it. You can see that there. And this is where the canopy, the rear portion would stay fixed. The canopy would raise right here. And this way I can just pull it off and show the pilots inside. So the underside here, I'm going to put some of this photo etch detailing. There's a piece that goes right up here in the front. Glue that into place. Then I have this little feature that goes down the side. And then there's also like a little speaker or something that attaches to this top corner right there. And then I also have these handles that attach to either side that kind of look like if it was a pilot it would be like the eject handles I think is what they are, that type of thing. And then I'm putting in the photo etch for the hinges of where the canopy would open. And in the back portion of the canopy here, we have like these struts or shocks or pistons, whatever, that would attach to the other portion. And I've gone and I've painted all this with Tamiya Fine Gray Primer, and I've also done a little bit of a sky gray on the upper portion here to differentiate, make a slightly darker shade of gray. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint with a German Gray Wash the top side to pick up all the detailing of the cushion on the top. Uh, I also attached these little photo etch pieces here, which is where the hinges of the door would attach if it were real, and they would fit right inside there. And I've painted those hinges with, uh, to me, a German gray. And then these are the other pieces that go inside the back portion of the canopy, the fixed portion. And I've gone and I've glued those into position. You can see how that looks through the window there. And basically this is the entire inside underside of the canopy. I also did those little wires across the top in some white. Then like the body I'm going to use some AK weather pencils and I'm just going to go around the canopy and do some chipping with the, the weathering pencil. Now I've got some chipping all around the outside of it. Then I'm going to go ahead and proceed and use some soot and mud pastels just to kind of dirty up the canopy, make it look like it's been used and worn and been through some battles. And I've also done some pastel weathering on the underside, make it look a little dirty like their hands have been touching it when they go in and out of the cockpit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue the rear portion of the canopy into position here. And then the front portion will just slip right in here and then I can just close it down. And our final piece of detailing for the snow speeder is the gun on the back. That's just um, the fine white primer with some Tamiya German gray wash over it to pick up the detailing of the gun. And then I've also gone and I've drilled out the uh, barrel of the gun as well because it was just flat. 
And with that done, I'm also going to use some Tamiya Pastel and just dirty it up a bit and make the barrel look a little black like it's been fired and dirty up the rest of it. And then we just attach it to the snow speeder. And finally we have the base here along with some of my electronic components. We have the uh, push button to turn on and off. And we also have my USB power supply to power the entire snow speeder. And those will both attach on the underside. I'll have the button on this side here. And then the USB power supply will attach right on this side. So I've gone and I've notched out for the USB and drilled out a hole for the button. You can see the power button fits right inside that hole there. And the USB power supply will fit right inside this notched out area. So I've gone and I've glued three little teeny pieces of some styrene tubing to raise it up a little bit so that when I go and I glue it to the underside of the base here with some hot glue, those little pieces of tubing will keep it raised so it'll fit perfectly in that notch. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue my power button to the other side. Add a little extra glue on the back side so that when it's pushed it will hold it in place. And there we've got the USB port and the power button. I also have some stash of Woodland Scenics rock formations. Um, I have a couple of different of these, but this one here I think is going to work. Um, I like the way that one looks, how it raises up from the ground. It's not a solid front face. And this should fit right on the front here. Hangs over a little on the sides, but I can deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this rock formation onto the back of the base here. And that's glued in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some wax paper under this. And I'm using the wax paper because I'm going to go around the outside of the base with some hot glue uh, so that it's not a solid square. And you can see that's all dried up now. The wax paper came right off. And it just makes it a little more uneven and it'll be a drop off instead of just a straight face. Then I've drilled a hole in the back for some tubing for the holding up the snow speeder and the wires will run through. And I'm going to do a little bit of a German gray wash over this rock. I want to darken it up a little bit. Um, they're a little bit darker if you look in the movie, the rock formations in the snow. And then I'm going to fill in this little bit of a crack here with just some regular Elmer's glue. Then I'm going to paint this back just with some German gray just to darken it up blend into the rock a little bit with some sponge. Then I'm going to use some micro snow balloons from AK and I'm going to do snow on the top of the base. So what I have here is some just straight up Elmer's glue, mixing it with some water, thin it down quite a bit, and I'm just going to start smearing this all over the top side of the base. I'm going to go all around the top, around the edges of the rocks, onto the front of the rocks just a touch get it all around the base and around my hot glue sides and then I'm just gonna start dropping this snow on top of the glue so it'll stick and we now have a snowy base with the rock formation and some snow on the rocks. To start wiring on the base I'm gonna put some solder on the uh, hot and ground pins of this USB connector to start out with then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder a red hot wire from hot over to one leg of my push button. That way when the button is pushed, the hot will travel through the button. So I have this copper tube here. The wires are going to run through the copper tube and the copper tube would just slip over the wires down into the bottom of the snow speeder. So I'm going to cut a piece of tubing here to the length that I'd like. And I think that'll do it for me. 
And then I've gone and I've bent the end of it just a touch to make the snow speeder tilted and I've painted it with white Tamiya primer. So I have the wires from the ship running through the tubing then into the base and I'm going to continue finishing soldering up the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder my two hots to the other side of the push button so that when the button is pushed power will flow through. i got both the hots soldered there. Then I'm going to go ahead and solder my ground wire to the other side of the USB port. I'm just going to go ahead and super glue the tube into the base. Then super glue the tube into the bottom of the snow speeder. And I present to you my completed snow speeder build. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.